What's going on guys? We got a lot of stories in the upcoming video. Tell you all about it coming up on Riding with Kev. Quick post-production note I'm gonna put in this video. I ended up shooting the update and then what I wanted to talk about and the video was just too long. I don't believe in 20 minute videos. I don't have time, you don't have time. So this video is just going to be the update and then I'll throw the tech tour uh, at the end of this one. But if you hear me say coming up later in the video, that will be the next video and I'll release them back to back. So it'll be the next video posted. I'm not gonna drag this out, but I just didn't want a 20 minute video. So on with the update. What's going on to the uh, new subscribers? Welcome to the usual suspects. Welcome back. Uh, I'll try and talk a little fast because I thought about it and I don't wanna make this two videos. I just wanna make it one video, but I know what happens if they get too long. So it's been a week, literally, since I last spoke to you, but we've been running hard and then running not at all. It's been very uh, interesting. So we were in South Carolina, as you remember last week, we ended up, uh, freight was just, eesh. So we ended up catching a load out of uh, Fort Mills, Fort Mills, South Carolina. And it was going to uh, Pflugerville, which is just north of Austin. So I got home last weekend on my 34, kinda. Because by the time I got loaded on Friday and got through Atlanta on a Friday afternoon, I uh, had to stop just across the Alabama line at the truck stop at the rest area. I got up Saturday, I drove 707 miles and got to Terrell, Texas. And my wife came and got me, that's about an hour and a half from the house. And I got there, I don't know, five o'clock Saturday night. Got home about seven, 7.30 and uh, spent Sunday getting groceries, doing laundry, video games with the kids. And next thing you know, boom, it's Monday morning, we're back in the truck. And uh, she got me to the truck pretty early and we rode down to Pflugerville. And I was like, well, you know, it's the middle of the day on Monday, the way freight's been, we're probably not gonna have many options. She said, hey, I got a load for you. Going uh, just out of there, going to Memphis. I was like, all right, cool, we can do that. It was, uh, I don't know, like 800 miles, three grand, pretty good rate on it. So we said, she goes, but it turns out it doesn't deliver until Thursday. I was like, well, I can be there, I can be there on Wednesday. And she goes, yeah, no, it it's, looks like it's Thursday. She goes, let me find something else. Goes, all right, cool, find me something else. <laughs> she goes, all right, I got another load. And she says, it's funny, because she goes, it's going out of New Braunfels, and it's got to go to Virginia, and this one has to be there on Wednesday. And it was, I mean, it was a tight timeline, which I like a tight timeline, because I like being able to roll. She goes, okay, let me look at it, da-da-da. She goes, all right, we got it, here's the load. She goes, but wait, it picks up in Van Normie, Texas, not New Braunfels. I was like, wait a second. So that means I got to go through Austin, through San Antonio, because New Braunfels is on one side of San Antonio, which is before you get to it, and Van Orme is on the other side. So I had to go through San Antonio and then try and come back out through San Antonio, through Houston to get up there at the timeline. And they weren't going to give any more money, even though it was further to pick up than they had told us. So she's like, no, let me find something else. I was like, all right, hey, we're starting to get some loads. We, we can deal with this. And she goes, all right, I got another one going from Del Rio, Texas, which is literally on the border. It's about a 250 mile bounce, picks up Tuesday. It can deliver Wednesday morning between eight and 11, 1500 miles away from where you pick it up, or you can deliver it Friday. I'm like, well, you know what? With the rate that's on this load for 1700 total miles, it was a good rate. I definitely set up this for a good week, deliver Thursday. I said, let's do that one. She said, oh, cool. So I bounced over. Uh, Monday, I stopped in Dehanas, Texas, at the rest area. And I got out of the rest area, handled some business about 10 o'clock, and I was the only truck in this rest area. And when you're the only truck at a rest area at 10 o'clock at night in the middle of nowhere, yeah, we kept the tire checker by our side that time. But I said, all right, so it's Tuesday morning, we're gonna get up, we gotta be there by Thursday morning, it's a long route. I run over there, I show up to the shipper, and you walk in, and it's never good when their first words are, we didn't expect you this early. I say, well, you may not have expected me this early, but I'm here, because I'm within my pickup window. So the park out there, we get you loaded, you know, give us about an hour to get this load together. So, all right, cool, no problem. 
So they get the load together. Now it's 11 o'clock on Tuesday. We're still trying to get 1,500 miles away by Thursday morning. You see where this is going. So I, I book it out of there. Um, I'll come back to that in the video, what happened on that trip. I got to just outside Oklahoma City, and this is one of those trips, and I love them. Like I said, some people don't, but it's literally, you run your clock, clock ends, you park. At 10 hours and one minute, you're up the next day pre-tripping. And I rolled, and I got up into uh, Illinois. Stopped, got up, and I had to be there by 11. I got there at 10.30 because of what happened on the trip up there and because of the time change. But you know what? I got unloaded. And so now it's noon on Thursday. And I tell my, my dispatcher, I say, I need a favor. Your boy's tired. I was like, hey, you know what? Rather than I only got six hours on my clock, rather than, hey, let's try and find a short load and do this and do that, I'm going to run the truck stop, find me a good load for Friday. And she goes, you got it. That makes sense. I, said, I don't, because I try when I can to help my dispatcher. I try and say, oh, I don't want her spinning wheels. She's trying to find all these short loads and I don't really want to do it then I'm wasting her time. And her time is just as valuable as anybody else's. And so that's cool. So I get up Friday morning, no load. She goes, it's, she's like, you just don't even want to see freight right now. I was like, I understand, I understand. Um, so you know, I went back there and I'm watching YouTube. I fell asleep. <laughs> Whoops. I said, the boy's tired, I'm getting old. And so I got like Friday at 3.30, my phone rings and wakes up, oh my God, it's 3.30 on Friday. I haven't had a load all day. Oh my gosh, what's going on? And I'm supposed to, this is my weekend load. This is my money maker, right? And she goes, I got a load for you. Check this out. She goes, you're going to have to run it overnight. Okay. Picks up 70 miles away. All right. It's going 300 miles. Okay. That's like less than 400 miles. Yeah. But it's got to deliver before six o'clock in the morning on Saturday. So my weekend run is 12 hours. So yeah, it's 500 pounds paying two grand you playing the home game that's about five bucks a mile so i was all right let's go and i rolled over there it took them 10 minutes to load it i said hey i'm gonna split berth this so that i have hours to get parked and uh then i'll run it over there in the morning they said no problem so i got kind of caught in a little cat nap there and then i rolled over drove all night and since i had to go through chicago in the snow I was kind of happy about it being middle of the night, but I got there this morning. They're like, all right, back up to the dock right there. It's three boxes, 500 pounds, unloaded in no time. Bounced over here to the Loves in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And I'm on a 48 because now my weekend load, since I don't have to deliver it on Monday, come Monday morning, I'm ready to start a new week. I'm empty, fresh clock. I'm in a good reload area in Wisconsin. So it definitely, definitely has worked in our favor. Plus. I have to do my taxes tomorrow. So tomorrow's gonna be a very long day. So now take a break here and we'll get into the purpose. All right, now, like I said, the next video will be what I, uh, what I was gonna talk about, but here is a tech tour, which is also about 90% changed. This video is old. I've actually completely switched to uh, Android. I don't have anything Apple on the truck anymore, but it still gives you the gist and I wanted to get it posted. Talk to you soon. So the first tech we'll talk about is just tech driving down the road. Now I have the seat lowered a little bit because the GoPro's on my head. When I'm driving down the road, I have two GPS's. Not because I'm lost, not because I don't know how to drive, but normally I'm on Google Maps, but thanks to Travis Kinley, I have the diamond status, ooh, big me, on Trucker Path, so I use that. And the reason I have this up is because I like to see the satellite. I like to know when I'm gonna go somewhere, if I'm going here, just for grins that you can't see it too well here because it's a path but trust me it's there when you're driving is if there's two turn lanes that's why i like google maps you know and you can see rest areas i can see the layout i'm obviously in the middle of a bunch of fields but i like having the satellite imagery just if i'm coming up on the intersection i'm not sure or you know i use my diesel 1000 which i absolutely love because i'm blind the big screen helps but sometimes you may come to an intersection and the purple doesn't make it real clear what you're doing i can go back over here and I get navigation with some satellite imagery. So I run two GPSs. I also run Bluetooth, you know, hey, you know who, on my phones where I run my music. So all my music, my podcast, it's all voice command. I love that, so I use that for my radio. That's my navigation for imagery. That's my navigation for my truck, because again, 
trucker path trucker this is designed for me i keep it updated so i will look up here that's where i keep my headset i do not wear this thing driving down the road i have the 220 i had to go with digital camo that's the only reason i got it and johnson logic said you need to get this and so i did i have no regrets but i just keep it hanging right up there and if i'm driving i can just grab it and i can throw it on my head with one hand like that and i don't have to take a hand off the wheel so again i have my cb here we have the unit in bearcat 880 i mounted the uh, external speaker my little thing came off i gotta hang that back up i don't normally drive with this hanging down normally it's put up like that but i do like to talk on it even though nobody else seems to and you go into the back and so i thought i was gonna have to buy a tv mount but i don't because it wedges in there perfectly and i only use that tv when i'm on 34s or overnight so i do have it's a vizio it is a smart tv it is connected to my wi-fi this is just an at&t little turbo it's uh, 55 bucks for 100 gigs so that's what i use for wi-fi on the truck tv and i also have my ipad this if i can get it out that's just for when i'm laying down if i want to lay down on the rack and watch tv or just watch some youtube videos and keep up with travis kinley that way and then i have my uh, laptop that i just got it is the uh, alienware x15 that's what i've been using for videos so laptop lap of luxury pull this out i think we're going to start doing if we can so <laughs> it's kind of weird because i got the laptop there but i got my mouse over here because it's so big but that's what she said so we're gonna do that and i can we're actually gonna start gaming with the kids so i actually have an xbox controller for this so we're gonna be gaming with the kids that way my kids will be able to spend some time with dad they i'm a call of duty freak i've been playing call of duty forever but now my kids are into apex so we might be doing the old apex thing so now again i have the updated upgraded microwave this thing is a hundred bucks and it has i was going to show you but it's not plugged in bake air fry i can cook a pizza and it comes out crispy i can cook chicken nuggets and they come out crispy i can cook a steak in here if i want to so fridge i don't really call fridge tech it's a built-in fridge you've seen that before so that is the tech that i use in my truck to get me through the times when i'm not with my family so hope you enjoy